All right, we've been gone for a while, but we are back. And today we're gonna to be making something quintessentially Nova Scotian, something that we all debate over. Today we're gonna to make my version of hodgepodge. All right, Renee, are you ready for the controversy you're about to start here? The war, um, I actually never realized, Doug, until I moved here 15 years ago and then realized what hodgepodge was. And then uh, I wrote an article about it um, when I used to write for the newspaper and everyone came out of the woodworks and I got in so much trouble because my version of a hodgepodge was not their version of a hodgepodge. So hodgepodge, I never realized, is very Nova Scotian. And um, this amazing book, which everybody in Nova Scotia cherishes out of old Nova Scotia kitchens from Marie Nightingale, has like all the old recipes. And her version of a hodgepodge is very different from my version of a hodgepodge. Hers actually like cooks down like uh, salt pork uh, with cream, and then she boils the vegetables separately and then pours the sauce on top. But my version is I'm um, using all the seasonal vegetables as they come in and out of season, so they're easy to swap out. And I cook mine down actually in um, the cream. And we have it at work. It comes on the menu every summer, and it's just one of those dishes for us that's like so comforting and easy. And it's able to use all those amazing vegetables from the summer um, and like swap them out. So right now we have like zucchinis and radishes and turnips and like snap peas and yellow beans. I could go on and on. So it makes it really beautiful and bright and fresh and very delicious. It's safe to say that. Everyone has a different version of hodgepodge. So this is your version. This is my version. Because I think like in Marie Nightingale, Doug, like she does cauliflower and carrots and potatoes and peas. I always put potatoes in my version of hodgepodge, but, um, and we sometimes put carrots and we get the beautiful like baby carrots uh, from like Offbeat or from Ted Hutton. But today we're gonna use all my favorite things that are like in season this instant. So I'm gonna just melt some butter and I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil to my pan. I like to actually start mine with shallots and garlic. Would you say that you're sort of mixing some of your classical training in here too? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, you think of like French cooking and you always, you know, often will start things off with like shallots and garlic. So I'm gonna just get my shallots started in here and I'm just gonna slice up two cloves of garlic really quick too, Doug. So I'm just gonna let this go for a few minutes before I get the rest of my vegetables ready. And I know you were asking me, Doug, the only thing I actually cook ahead is I parboil my new potatoes. So I've got these really fun little uh, zucchinis that we got from Ted Hutton, uh, one of our local farmers um, at the farmer's market on Saturday, the brewery market. Doug, what like vegetables do you like to put in hodgepodge? Well, one of the vegetables that you didn't have that I was sort of excited about was like shelling peas. Well, I have sugar snap peas that I got um, from Jamie and Sarah at Offbeat Farm. I do love when the new carrots are out, like the little, the little tiny nice. ones that are nice and tender. And but I like to put radishes in mine. I love radishes. The thing that I have to say about hodgepodge is it maybe has one of the best names for a dish that I've ever heard. Hodgepodge, that's a fun hodgepodge. name. Hodgepodge, it is fun. fun. And I like to keep it, cook it so that my vegetables are still like fairly al dente. Next are the beautiful uh, sugar snaps. I do, I love sugar snaps. So those are gonna go in. And yellow beans, which are my favorite. You don't have to be fussy about cutting everything. So nice and colorful. I'm gonna throw in just some of my potatoes that I parboiled. So I've got everything in. I'm gonna just season uh, again, a little bit more salt. I don't actually put pepper in this. And you're sense. looking you're looking to have pretty bright flavors going on here. Bright too. flavors, bright colors. So I'm actually going to deglaze a little bit of white wine. White wine. Again, was not traditional, was not in the recipe. It called for salt pork. Once that has like burned off, I'm gonna add heavy cream. I use 35%. I almost drank this earlier because I actually thought it was like a glass of milk. That would probably not go down. That would not well. go down very well. So I'm just gonna let this simmer and reduce for a few minutes, and then it'll cook through uh, the radishes and the beans and the peas. While my hodgepodge is simmering away, you can obviously eat this like just on its own because it would be hearty, but I like to serve it with haddock because haddock is a very family-friendly fish. Everyone loves haddock. 
So I'm just gonna season it with a little bit of salt. And I made some breadcrumb with some, uh, I had some day old um, sourdough from Birdie's. And I just mix it with some lemon zest, uh, chiros asiago, parsley and olive oil. And I like it because I keep mine fairly um, like chunky. So I know the kids love it when I cook the haddock with this breadcrumb. So it's like crunchy. And haddock doesn't take long. Literally, this takes like just a few minutes. I think my oven's at like 425. So I'm just gonna throw this in our oven while this is cooking. And that'll take a few minutes and then we'll come back together. I'm gonna cook this just a little bit longer and I'm gonna finish it with some lemon juice, which is um, again, my version of hodgepodge. And then we'll dish it up. All right, so the hodgepodge has been simmering away for a few minutes now. And what I like to do is um, turn it off. I like to finish mine with a little bit of lemon juice. I love the acidity of it and just the brightness that it gives. And sometimes also, if I have radishes in there, it actually, um, the whole sauce kind of turns like a nice like pink color. It's actually really pretty when the, the pink starts to come out. True, and I know in the, um, the Marine Nightingale, like they finish theirs with chives. So you could finish this with chives or you could finish it with um, tarragon would be really nice too. It's beautiful. And I don't like mine to be like too, I like mine to still be slightly loose. A little soupy. A little, almost. well, I wouldn't, yeah, I guess you could say soupy. I like to use the word, it's looser. Look at that, that's beautiful. And you get all your vegetables in there. That's right. All right, and grab my fish. And I'm going to gingerly place some of that on there, like that. Oh, nice. You want two pieces? No, one's fine. I mean, one's it's fine. a pretty rich dish with the cream, so I think one piece of fish one is piece perfect. Of fish. Perfect. Yeah. All right. I always like just a little bit of olive oil. And voila, that is my version of hodgepodge. Come on over, Doug. All right. Here we go. I'm actually going to garnish it. I forgot that I had this beautiful tray of... Um, these are amazing. Um, the guys from Maritime Gourmet Mushrooms dropped these off at work, and then I brought them here. But you could totally garnish with like beautiful flowers. I think we put some in for some of the other shots that we got. But... Yeah, because you've got like borage and nasturtiums and calendula and Johnny Jump Ups, all kinds of things out back. Mmm. This is amazing. So it's easy and you can do it throughout the summer. And I mean, you could do it in the winter too. So you could do then in the winter, you could do carrots and potatoes, cabbage. Leeks. Leeks. Yeah, so you could have, you could hodgepodge it all year round. This particular version of hodgepodge that is amazing and it's a new thing for me is when you cook radishes. I love cooking radishes. Like they're totally different flavors. Yeah. And texture and it's like, who knew? But should we start the debate? Start the debate, the hodgepodge debate. Here we go. Put tell your us. comments yeah. <laughs> down below. Tell us what's wrong with this hodgepodge or maybe what's right with yours. But you know, I think it's fun that people can debate over it. It's like chowder too. Everyone debates True. over chowder. Amazing. All right, well, we're back on track. We can't wait to see you guys again soon. Tell us if you want any particular recipes. You know, we're ready to start cooking some more. Maybe do some stuff outside. Yeah, do some stuff Maybe outside. Maybe go on some road trips. Maybe we could like spark up the smoker. All right, well you eat your lunch. Uh, I need to get back to work. So do you for lunch service. I know. So. All right, thanks guys. Bye. Have a great day.